Uh, welcome to our presentation. Our presentation is based on gender inequality and gender pay gap in Uber. Uh, I would like to start off with the introduction and what uh, you can expect from our presentation. Um, our research focuses on vertical segregation existing in many organizations today. Our research gives example of previous success stories uh, and as well as controversies in Uber. Uh, it also focuses on the various barriers faced by women in the tech industry uh, and how it impacts the companies around us. Uh, we use different data to compare and contrast between Uber and Lyft, which are both white sharing companies. And <clears throat> this research also provides implications and necessary recommendations for the gender pay gap within the industry itself. And uh, our problem statement is to eliminate the gender inequality experiences of women employees in Uber. And the main aim of our presentation today is to present details on prevailing gender inequality and discrimination <coughs> issues in Uber. And now I'd like to move on to the methodologies. Uh, the methodology is that uh, <coughs> we have divided our um, uh, methodologies and the information we collected into two sections. Uh, one for definitions and literature review, uh, and the second for statistical data representations. Um, we have gathered most of the data using secondary sources, using both qualitative and quantitative um, sources itself. We have shortlisted the important information through journal articles, and more specifically, uh, peer-reviewed journal articles. Uh, we use statistics and various surveys done by professionals to prove the issue that we are imposing. <coughs> we searched for all the peer-reviewed uh, journal articles from the UW Library and Google Scholar uh, for more authentic information. And all the data related to Uber were collected um, based on the year uh, between 2013 to 2018, whereas all the information collected uh, in relation to gender inequality and pay disparity were collected from the year 2002 to 2008. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to call Isha. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'll be talking about uh, the literature review. And uh, to start off, uh, gender inequality can be defined as allowing individuals different opportunities due to apparent differences based completely on issues of gender. So. Uh, People can treat you uh, entirely based on uh, what what gender you are, either you're a male or a female. Uh, they'll have a different outlook on you. And uh, gender has many implications for people's lives, but for uh, but most consequently, uh, is that it acts as a basis for inequality between uh, persons. And uh, the second point is, women's are underrepresented in the U.S. technological sectors and they hold uh, comparatively fewer technological related jobs than men. Uh, the reports by Bloomberg shows that women held about uh, only 26% of computer and mathematical jobs in the US today, uh, which is below the level as compared uh, to the year 1960. And uh, today, uh, gender disparity uh, in technological jobs is wide and deep, uh, it's widespread. It exists at uh, US, European, and Asian, or all over the countries. And uh, it's, it's seen at the rank and file executive and board levels, like all the levels. And it extends to salaries as well as slots. And female technological entrepreneurs also get uh, far less ventures capital than startups led by men. Uh, uh, and, uh, and the last point is. This research also investigates about the gender inequality issue inside two technological uh, companies, that is Uber and uh, Lyft. So uh, now, uh, for further, I'd like to call on Sari. Thank you. Sari, sorry, sorry. Thank you, Lisa. Now I'm going to explain the rest of the literature review. Both Uber and Lyft are technological platforms which eliminates the concept of calling, dispatcher, and hiring a taxi on the street. Their app connects the driver and the riders. Um, they, they pick up the riders and drive them to the preferred destination all around the cities. 
and and then they get paid for the for for the ride. Uh, there is no exchange of cash between driver and the riders. No, rather than credit card, uh, debit card store in the application pays the Uber, uh, while then uh, their their uh, fare get tra transferred to the driver. The transaction between both uh, rider and uh, drivers is so uh, swift and elegant. Both, uh, both the both parties uh, know the economics uh, before the ride begin, uh, based on calculation of time, demand, and distance. And the last one is vertical segregation. A uh, vertical segregation can be referred as the over and under uh, representation of. Uh, of identification of clearly identifiable uh, groups of workers occupation based on um, uh, interest uh, desirable attributes job and stability uh, it also referred uh, by the uh, by the glass ceiling concept uh, that describes that describes the um, uh, that describes the existence barrier of invisible and uh, visible uh, obstacle that leads in that leads in the certain variety of women in the organization uh, in the organization in women in power and decision position in the organization the phenomenon of existing barriers um, barriers prevents the woman accession uh, which, uh, by, which, uh, which leads to the sticky floor. This concept describes the um, this concept describe this concept describes the uh, to maintain the woman uh, woman in their woman in their position according to the organizational pyramid. Uh, now I'm going to explain a bit about the company. Uber is a company which provides driving service to its customer, uh, which was established in 2009 by Travis Kalanick and and Garrett Camp. Uh, it operates uh, in 58 countries and its value has reached over 65 billion. Uh, whereas Lyft is also a transportation providing based company uh, based in San, Fra San Francisco, California. Um, uh, Lyft passed 1 billion revenue in 2017. Uh, both Uber, both Uber uh, as Uber is very successful, uh, succe as Uber as Uber is very successful and lots of uh, people are using it, lots of people are using it. Uh, and Lyft is also a transportation company, but not as success as but not as success as Uber. As Uber, but the country, but the few controversies of Uber has been uh, benefited for the Lyft company. Now, thank you. Now, I'd like to call others for the further presentation. Uh, good morning. Uh I would, uh, I would like to talk on uh, reason and uh, reason and discussions of uh, Uber uh, of Uber uh, in tech fields. Uh, tech fields most uh, uh, most of male are the dominant in all the levels. Uh, in one of the study of uh, ISSCA found that uh, there is a lack of a uh, uh, lack of a uh, uh, ment uh, lack, lack of a mentor and the uh, and the female role model uh, in female role. Uh, Female role model uh, that is a less number of female engineers in an organization. Uh, this, uh, this barrier is also applicable in the Uber. Uber. Other reasons is uh, gender bias, uh, gender bias, unequal growth, uh, growth opportunities, and unequal unequal pay for the same skills compared to men. Uh, these are uh, these are the results why uh, why women are un underrepresented in the tech fields, and uh, and all the all role model models and the leaders are predominant male. Uh, Uber, uh, uh, Uber gender pay uh, section also reveals the same conditions uh, going inside the, uh, inside the company. Uh, according to according uh, Stanford, Stanford and the University of Chicago, male uh, Chicago male drivers of Uber earns uh, seven percent more uh, seven more than female drivers. Uh, pay, uh, pay, uh, pay gap uh, inside the Uber exists uh, due to uh, due to uh, drive, uh, drivers driving speeds and the experience uh, as a study. As a study reveals, uh, reveals uh, that 77 percent of, uh, of female drivers leaves the company. Uh, leaves the company. Uh, according, uh, 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 the primary, uh, the primary reasons are, are the uh, are uh, IT uh, precise as a male uh, male dominant uh, field. Uh, as there are majority number of male role model in uh, uh, role model is male in the industry, and also the lack of work life balance. Now I would like to call uh, Avilash. 
Thank you, Alice. And now talking further on gender pay gap, as we know, inequality doesn't only include like a gender discrimination uh, based on sex, age, race, or religion or culture, because uh, a gender pay gap in uh, workplace is also a, also a kind of uh, inequality. According to the research, uh, as we have researched for, for further information on gender pay gap, we have found that uh, experts such as Cody Cook, Re Rebecca Diamond, jo Jonathan Hall, John Ellis, Paul Oyer, uh, th as they have researched on uh, the Uber gender pay gap, what they found is that male drivers uh, uh, earn 7% more than female drivers, but the uh, the main uh, uh, but the main statement here is that what is uh, why is that there is a seven percent gender pay gap in Uber? Uh, uh, they have uh, in their research they have found that uh, it uh, the seven percent gender pay gap is uh, 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 this difference is not uh, uh, this difference uh, does uh, is not caused by uh, the customer rating as uh, the payment is uh, not effective, uh, affected uh, by their customer rating. Uh, the main reason for the uh, Uber gender pay gap is uh, driving speed and the Uber experience. Uber experience has been uh, uh, sorry. Uber experience um, uh, in it means that. In Uber, there are more experienced driver, and they they know how to earn money, and they have more experience uh, to drive the customers and uh, from the very far distance places as compared to the drivers who have just started to work at the Uber company. Next is the driver driving speed. Uh, in driving speed, uh, women tend to drive 2.2 percent slower than male drivers, and they tend to cherry pick uh, the time uh, time, and they also have. Um, uh, they also have flexible uh, working uh, uh, working hour in uh, we weekends and weekdays uh, uh, in comparison to the uh, male drivers. Uh, the next one is uh, as we know that uh, uh, seventy seven percentage of uh, female drivers tend to leave the company. Uh, uh, more faster than uh, 65 percent of uh, male drivers uh, within six months of time. Uh, uh, furthermore, uh, uh, in uh, in the uh, the new CEO Darren Kosh uh, Koshro Sashi has also stated in an interview done by Tina Brown, live interview done by Tina Brown in Women in the World event. He stated uh, when Tina asked him like as why there are more COOs in the company rather than CEOs. He stated that uh, it is because, uh, because there, is, uh, there is still exists inequality in the workplace and the, there has, the, it takes uh, time and investment uh, to reduce this gender pay gap uh, so that uh, they can uh, provide equal opportunities for both male and female without discrimination and without uh, without any other differences in the company. Thus, I'd like to conclude my presentation here and, and I'd like to call Saivi for the further presentation. Um, good morning to everyone present here. I'm Saivi and I'm going to talk about the, um, the pie charts represented here uh, on the basis of the comparison between Lyft and Uber. So, uh, after the company-wide investigation, um, the board members and the media investigated that uh, uh, there is a difference between male and female workers and workers from different ethnic backgrounds in the company, that is Uber and Lyft. So, talking about Uber, the <coughs> The number of female, uh, the overall workforce consists of 36% of the female workers and 15% of them are in technical roles while only 22% of them are in uh, leadership, leadership roles. Uh, the ethnic background of, um, of the company represents that only 50% uh, of them, uh, the highest number of representation of the, uh, of the people from ethnic background are whites while 31% of them are Asians and 9% are black. Um, talking about Lyft, Lyft has a slightly better number than Uber, that is 42% of them are, uh, overall workforce is women, and 18% um, and of them are in technical roles, which is better than Uber, as it is represented here, and, uh, and uh, in the leadership role, the percentage is slightly more better than Uber, that is 36%. So we can, uh, uh, and talking about ethnicity, 36% of the Lyft workforce consists of white workers, followed by 19% Asians, 6% um, Blacks, and 7% Latins. So we can say that uh, uh, Lyft is doing 
better than its cross town rival Uber. So, what are the implications? Um, with, for the implication, I would like to tell that with the release of the uh, with the release of the report, Uber is trying to reduce gender inequality and gender pay gap by uh, by reducing uh, the work hours, creating more flexible work hours, and uh, creating a, uh, creating more. Uh, safer environment for the women and other ethnic uh, uh, people from ethnic backgrounds. So, uh, and also they are providing consumer consumer surplus. The company is also committing three million dollars uh, over three years to uh, to support organization working to support uh, or raise women and underrepresented groups in technology. So I would like to conclude that Uber and Lyft are doing better in terms of, in many terms, but they should, uh, be, but they should improve their company policies and create a safer working environment. Um, uh, uh, there is a uh, thinking that women or other ethnic background, underrepresented ethnic background, cannot do same uh, kind of work like men, uh, but. Uh, uh, like men, thus creating a glass ceiling effect, which can be reduced when, if the company try to work harder to create a stronger policy. Thank you.